obviously uh, thrilled to be here, Ravis, uh, coming on with the start of classes yesterday. And uh, uh, an unusual, um, you know, going on my eighth year as a head coach, uh, you start a, a school year, you have such a better grip on your kids and your program than past before because of the opportunity we were afforded in uh, August to go to Canada with this group. So um, the main purpose was to get the schedule out to everybody, um, one that obviously I'm uh, – We've clearly challenged ourselves greatly, uh, and uh, we'll get into some of those specifics. Playing against uh, you know, seven teams that played in the NCAA or NIT a year ago, um, uh, 12 teams finished in the final 125 of the RPI this last year. I think we played nine on paper going into last year at this time. So, uh, And I think uh, uh, to our staff's credit and to everybody involved in scheduling, we have uh, – uh, secured uh, what arguably is uh, in the first time in our basketball history uh, with the return games of South Carolina and Penn State in 14 and 15, two of uh, however you want to term BCS, superpower, whatever. Uh, I know 91, 92, someone referenced to me earlier. Uh, in all due respect, I think Penn State was one of those schools that returned. They did not play in a – BCS level league in, in other than football. I mean, football was different then, and they did not play. So um, we have, uh, and with the anticipated, uh, expected and anticipated increase in conference games next year, we're pretty much done with our schedule for next year uh, already. Uh, we've got to plug in a couple names to some schools, to some games, but our outline is really, there's no really, we have no room to add any more games on our schedule for next year. Uh, so some of the uh, the decisions late uh, with the non-Division one games were a byproduct of what we have in place for the following year. Uh, when you balance out home and away, we could not t start another series here this year where we would have to return a game next year to somebody else. So in a perfect world, we would have uh, liked not to have played the non-Division one games, but they fit what we needed for this group in terms of the home and away makeup, not just for this year, but also for next year as well. And uh, so... Uh, you know, with the conference changing, we're adding teams that are coming off historic seasons in their respective leagues. Uh, Louisiana Tech, um, Middle, Charlotte, they're all playing at a high level coming into the conference. And we'll add Western a year from now, and we're fortunate to get them on our schedule one time only coming to our place as part of the exempt event uh, in uh, November right before Thanksgiving. So we're going to be tested greatly. Uh, I think uh, our, our, our away from home schedule is uh, really challenging. Uh, and our home schedule is good as well. Arkansas State and, and, and Western will be picked to win the Sun Belt. Um, you know, Wilmington, we're familiar with Buzz. And, uh, good teams throughout the schedule go on the road. You know, you play in Akron, who's been a juggernaut in the MAC. Uh, we, we'll start that back up after taking a year off in that series. Um, the Nevada game will be next year. The return game will be the following year. And uh, Vanderbilt uh, in the SEC. It would be a great uh, venue to play in. I, uh, my, my Charleston team played there uh, one of my first two years at Charleston. Um, going to South Carolina, having them come to us. Going to Penn State, having them come back to us. It's great. West Virginia, obviously, every year. And a big Saturday night in the middle of December. Uh, great, great timing, I think, for that game. So, um, you know, Moorhead, so thrilled we, last year when we got that back on the schedule and renewing that longstanding rivalry of 90-plus times we've played. Uh, so a lot of tradition, a lot of history. And, a lot of good things for us as we open up the school year. And again, I, th I feel like we've got such a better grip on where we're at today because of the uh, wonderful opportunity we were afforded earlier this summer uh, and the advantages that we had taking that trip up there and the practices before it and the experiences through it. So I'm uh, more than happy to answer any and all questions about scheduling, uh, the schedule, um, Canada, uh, anything else you want to ask personnel-wise. Uh, I'm more than happy to answer anything uh, right now. Coach, with so many changes in the offseason, bringing in new personnel, how much has that benefited you and your staff as being able to have that Canada trip to get a good look, almost a preview of your team for what you have coming up this season? It was, it was so invaluable. Obviously, we're so grateful to our administration, Dr. Cobb and Mike Hamrick in particular, for helping uh, allow that to ha take place. And like I said, we had 10 great days of practice before we went. And we weren't at full strength for different reasons. Uh, you know, Edmonds was not cleared medically uh, to go. Uh, we left him home to rehab, and he's taken advantage of that. Uh, the Sene thing was a, a weird thing that kind of popped up right before we left. I have no, no problem with him uh, making all getting cleared before we start our games, November or whatever. 
Uh, we just got to get some paperwork done back from Senegal. And uh, Mbao was a little banged up coming off the knee surgery. Uh, and Thomas was not uh, in enrolled in school. So, but just, uh, you know, it was a, an incredible opportunity for us. And, uh, you know, we're changing a lot of things. Change, change has been a big word for us since last spring. Just, you know, everyone equates it to our personnel, but our style of play has changed. Uh, and our personnel has changed. So it, it was an inv invaluable opportunity for our staff to get the, uh, a jump start, so to say, with our group. And, them, and, and vice versa, them for us. You know, new guys all had to get terminology and, again, some things that were changing, both ends of the floor. Well, you know, I, I said that when we came here. I said we wanted to, play, you know, have have a, a national schedule, uh, and play the best teams we can play. And it's a it's a it's a challenging. I mean, we don't need to, to, to digress any more than I've already talked about in terms of the scheduling at Marshall and in a lot of places. We're not the only ones, but it's a it's a big challenge for us and a very, it's a hard balancing act. And uh, we've worked tirelessly. Mark Klein on my staff deserves a lot of credit. Jeff O'Malley from our administration. Uh, we all work hand in hand in, in trying to uh, put together the best schedule possible each year. And it's a uh, like I said. You know, we were laughing, Klein and I were laughing about how we really were, you know, we, we've got a big board for scheduling in his office and we have no room, for, you know, in what's anticipated an, an increase to 18 at the minimum conference games next year. It takes, you know, it takes two out of the equation. Now you said uh, Penn State would be a return game, South Carolina would be a return game, would Vandy as well? No, Vanderbilt's a one-time deal, we'll go down there. So. But, but still, an SEC school, Big Ten school. Never but, happened before. Yeah, coming in, I mean, did, what do you feel that speaks to in, in being able to well, I think uh, a, a, I give uh, give those guys credit. You know, uh, uh, their coaches at the respective schools. Uh, you know, uh, Pat at, at Penn State and I know each other very well, and, and Frank and I are good friends at, at South Carolina. So, uh, I think that they, you know Frank's quote to me was, "I, I had a, we uh, the South Carolina thing just kind of popped up, and we were gonna try to play them one time, maybe for a guarantee game, uh, uh, as opposed to Vanderbilt." Frank said, "You know, we need a good we need a good con good non conference road game the following year, which would be a, so we were we were thrilled with the opportunity, and uh, we'll welcome them to the Henderson Center, obviously with uh, open arms." Before you go, with Canada, you talked about versatility a lot with this team, having to use guys in different positions. How much did that really show in Canada? No, no doubt. I mean, we were able to move guys around, as you saw. You know, I think Steve did a great job uh, trying to get stats and stuff to you all, and uh, you know, our minutes were so balanced. Uh, we played a lot of. Weird, unique, and uh, maybe not, not even some probable lineups up there just to get guys' minutes and rotations. But we're big on that. You know, uh, I don't think we only have but a couple guys, maybe three guys we think right now that can only play one position in our program. That's uh, Cambola and, uh, and uh, use at the center spot. And it's really their own. And then really Kareem at the point is his you know, true position. So everybody else is a multiple position guy. Uh, we wanted to change that. It's obviously a byproduct of some recruiting, and uh, you'll, I think that's going to be reflective in our style. Uh, you know, I think change is a, a good way to describe our program since last spring, and don't equate it just to personnel. Was that a big reason for the style change? Yeah, I mean, I've coached that way before. It's how we coached that. We played at, at Charleston and had success that way, and uh, you know, so you're smart enough to adjust to your personnel as well. And I like, I, I really like our pieces. Um, I like interchangeable parts and. Uh, makes it a lot uh, more fun, uh, especially again the way we want to play. And we, when we kind of have at least a base foundation, we didn't get that in depth in terms of how we're, you know, in terms of the press and how we're going to get extended in our defense, which will help create better offense for us. So. Tom, with the Thursday Saturday now, you've got pretty good swings there once you're in the conference too. Uh, and from San Antonio to El Paso, from Rice to Louisiana Tech, that works out pretty well for you. Yeah, not bad. You know, it's obviously something that's new to the conference. We were all. As coaches, when we met in, in Florida in the spring, we were all, uh, not all of us were on board initially when we started talking about it. Then as the discussion unfolded, I think everyone became very committed to it. It just makes too much sense. Uh, I think you have m more schools that are similar in their resources now than maybe we had before. Um, so we had to make it a little bit more uh, uh, even. And I think it's good for our fans. I think it's uh, you, you know now. All right, every, every this Thursday and Saturday we're home. Okay, the following one we're gone. You know, so that you know you can kind of block some things out. Um, I think it's be better for us academically. Uh, you know, and I think you know as I said earlier, um, a lot of you know I, I try to do we try to make decisions that are in the best interest a for our program, but also our fans deserve. Our, I'm so happy for our fans. They deserve South Carolina and Penn State's to be on our campus. You know, they've they've they that, that's, I'm happy for them as well. Uh, they deserve that as well. We got a great fan base, you know, and 
Uh, so some of those decisions that you make and um, things that you try to put in place are with that in mind. When there's a team here that everybody will overlook on the home schedule, just even at Boston, I mean, they were pretty good. Yeah, they were really good. I mean, I think you're going to – you, know, you can look through a lot of teams on our, our, our you know, I think Arkansas State's going to be really, really good. They went up to the western part of Canada, up in the Vancouver area. I think went three and zero up there. Uh, John Brady, the former coach at LSU, was the coach at Arkansas State. But Stephen F. Austin was a team that had a great year last year. New coach Brad uh, Underwood, who was an assistant at South Carolina, I've known Brad for a long time. He'll do a great job there. Uh, I just think you got quality teams again throughout. You know what I mean? And, um, and with our group, you know, uh, we, we've got to you got to gain experience, get, go through experiences to gain experience, and uh, we'll find that out obviously with our exhibition and right into the South Carolina State game as we open up the regular season. How long before you mentioned Edmonds earlier? How long before he's able? To he's much closer to full go. You know, um, um, you know, so much. You know, again, uh, the word change comes up. You know, the NCAA change. We we open up regular practice Friday, uh, September twenty seventh. It's our first official day of practice under the new rules guidelines of the NCAA so you know uh, he'll get he's, he's moving moving forward to being fully cleared uh, we anticipate him probably around that time or beginning of October to have full clearance no restrictions and uh, Tom does done a great job with that Tom Belmaggio our trainer and we got some other guys just dinged up off the trip that have to get back to full strength as well nothing too too serious uh, just some uh, wear and tear stuff when does uh, when if ever does Ohio get back on the schedule I don't know if we have room Who is that? Chris Thompson's skill set. What do you feel like this guy? Well, he's very talented. Obviously, Chris is enrolled, uh, a full-time student here. Uh, started classes with everybody else, as we said, all along. Uh, so uh, we're thrilled to have him. Uh, it's still early in the process of getting, you know, uh, you're basing some of the evaluations off some of the JUCO games you saw or AAU stuff, so that's not really fair. Chris has to adjust to us. We're not adjusting to Chris. You know, we've got a lot of things in place, and uh, you know, he obviously is a talented young man. He's going to have to shake some rust off. Uh, had not been with us this summer. He worked out out back home and finished up some school. But he was in Denver playing some stuff out there. But uh, he's ex so so excited for the opportunity to be here. He's thankful for the opportunity, and um, you know, he's going to. Uh, he's got to he's got to fit you know and it, it, the seam the, the transition I think has been seamless the last couple of days just being around our kids and we've got a great group of guys that have embraced him and but uh, you know his it's way too early to figure out what his impact will be or won't be you know what I mean we're thrilled to have him uh, and uh, but uh, he'll he'll have to catch up to us you know what I mean in terms of that. Yeah, you know that's obviously it's jumped around now, but the thing is a Saturday night, you know, middle of December. Uh, you're coming off the uh, probably a good time as, as, as you know obviously there's the, being a first one of you know the, the move to being a, f a first semester game uh, I think that fits better because we're kind of on the the heels of regular football season and so hopefully we'll have another great crowd there and uh, obviously we recognize it's a great rivalry it's a great night for basketball in the state of West Virginia. Yeah, yeah, everything you do, you build it up, you know, and uh, Woody talked about the Thursday, Saturday in conference. Well, you know, you also, I scheduled Thursday, Saturday Vanderbilt at Vanderbilt at Penn State, and some of that was done by, you know, to help us prepare. There's a couple, couple other opportunities early in the season when we're home with only one day between, so you got to get your kids acclimated to that type of a scenario, and I think we've done that with, uh, with our scheduling. So, uh, you know, we've got, you know, the balancing act of trying to, you know, balance what teams you play where is really hard to do, and, um, you know, we have a tough stretch there. I think we go at, at Vandy, at Penn State, take the break and play WVU in three-game stretch. And I think on the heels of going to East Tennessee State prior to that. So we got, you know, a lot of the balancing act that we've got to accomplish in the schedule. But I thought overall it was, uh, I think it speaks a lot for uh, where our program is headed and the excitement we have for uh, this group in particular as we move forward. Conference is taking everybody this year. What I'm sorry? Conference is taking everybody this year. What are your thoughts on Yeah, it's. As far as I know, everybody's playing the conference schedule, so they all should have a chance to go to the conference tournament. I, know, I think that's we and we talked about that. You know, if a team's going to play 16 conference games, they should have the opportunity to go play uh, play in the conference tournament. And uh, that was again another topic of discussion at the coaches' meetings. And thankfully, the athletic directors and administrators passed that through for us. You a fan of going to 18 next year? I, I, I'm a fan of playing more conference games. We all complain and. Uh, about being able to hard getting non-conference games every place you know a lot of, you know, a lot of other schools in our league have the same struggles we do and some more than us so 
one of the few ways I know to is increase your conference games. And you're getting home, you're getting the same amount of home and away games as everybody else. And so right now the number is 18. At, at the, we've been led to believe 18. There's no, that has not been voted on. It has not been passed. But that is what we are at least hoping for as we move forward. And I, I'm in favor of that, yes. And I think, I, I think Mike is as well. Thank you.